Where's the damage? That's basically what California's Coastal Commission said when they tried to shut down SpaceX's lawsuit. After the commission blocked Elon Musk's plan to launch more rockets from California, SpaceX didn't just sit back, they went full force, accusing the agency of political bias and straight-up unconstitutional overreach. But California hit back hard, saying, look, the Air Force went ahead with the launches anyway. So, where's the harm? A federal judge almost tossed the case in March, siding with the state. It looked like a major win for California. But SpaceX wasn't done, not even close. They came back swinging, and this time, the court is letting it move forward. With national security, federal versus state power, and Elon's political drama all clashing in one legal firestorm. This fight could reshape how space launches are regulated in the US. So how did SpaceX flip the script? And could this turn into a landmark win for Musk? Let's break it all down, right here on TechMap. The legal fight between SpaceX and the California Coastal Commission is back in the spotlight. And this time, things might swing in SpaceX's favor. A federal judge in Los Angeles, Stanley Blumenfeld Jr., just gave Elon Musk's aerospace company the green light to move forward with its lawsuit against the California Coastal Commission. The judge said there's enough evidence, at least for now, that the commission may have unfairly targeted SpaceX with stricter regulations. Blumenfeld in March rejected an earlier version of SpaceX's lawsuit, but allowed the company to amend and refile it. SpaceX added more allegations and details, the judge said, showing how it could be harmed by the commission's actions. This legal drama started in October 2024, when SpaceX filed a lawsuit accusing the Coastal Commission of egregiously and unlawfully overreaching its authority and even engaging in naked political discrimination. In essence, SpaceX wants the court to rein in the commission's power over its rocket launch operations. The heart of the conflict? SpaceX's bold plan to launch 50 rockets a year from Vandenberg Space Force Base in 2025, plans that the state's Coastal Commission effectively blocked. The commission's argument, SpaceX is mostly running commercial missions and should therefore apply for a Coastal Development Permit, CDP. They pointed out that 80% to 87% of the rockets don't carry U.S. government payloads. They're launching satellites for Musk's other venture, Starlink. Environmental concerns were also raised, particularly over the loud sonic booms created by the rockets, which could disturb coastal wildlife and local communities. SpaceX fired back, saying its Falcon 9 launch program is actually a federal agency activity. That classification, the company claims, puts it outside the scope of the state's permit process. Instead, any oversight should come through a federal consistency plan worked out with the U.S. military. SpaceX maintains that the commission's demand for a coastal permit is flat-out illegal. But here's where things get even more heated. SpaceX claims that the commission's real motivation isn't the environment, it's politics. The company argues that Elon Musk's outspoken political views are what triggered the extra scrutiny. One commissioner allegedly slammed Musk last year for hopping about the country, spewing and tweeting political falsehoods during the 2024 presidential race. At the time, Musk was publicly supporting Donald Trump. Musk pushed back hard, arguing that bringing his personal views into regulatory decisions violates his constitutional rights. He insisted that his tweets have no bearing on what the Coastal Commission should be doing. In its lawsuit, SpaceX also makes claims against Commission members as individuals outside the scope of their official duties. But that part was trimmed by Blumenfeld. In the lawsuit, SpaceX goes even further, accusing the Commission of unconstitutional overreach and interfering in federal and national security matters. According to the company, there has been no significant effect on coastal resources from their launches. Rarely has a government agency made so clear that it was exceeding its authorized mandate to punish a company for the political views and statements of its largest shareholder and CEO, the suit states. 
Backing SpaceX is Jared Isaacman, commander of the Polaris Dawn mission. He took to X to criticize the commission for obstructing progress. In his post, Isaac Mann argued that many of SpaceX's missions, especially those involving the Starshield system, directly serve national security interests and should be above politics. In this ongoing clash, there's another key player we can't overlook, the U.S. Air Force, an influential third party with both regulatory and operational power. It was actually the Air Force that first proposed upping SpaceX's annual launch count from 36 to 50. According to them, the proposal fully complied with California Coastal Agency requirements, including efforts to minimize sonic booms and implement biological monitoring. What's more, the U.S. Space Force rightfully declared the expansion of SpaceX launches from Vandenberg a matter of national security under federal jurisdiction. So when the California Coastal Commission voted to block SpaceX's expansion plan, the Air Force pushed back. Hard. Not only did they protest the decision, but they also made it clear they would move forward with more SpaceX launches anyway. Indeed, just three days after SpaceX filed a suit against CCC, the U.S. Space Force awarded SpaceX two task orders totaling $733.6 million part of the NSSL Phase 3 program. All of these national security launches would take place from Vandenberg. This became a key point when the Coastal Commission later asked a federal judge to toss out SpaceX's lawsuit. In a January filing in Los Angeles Federal Court, the Commission argued that SpaceX hadn't demonstrated how the agency's October vote actually harmed the company. After all, the Air Force rejected the decision and proceeded with the launches regardless. The Air Force had the final decision to proceed with the project, and in fact, did so, lawyers from the California Attorney General's office told the court. Despite standing firmly behind SpaceX, the Air Force also extended an olive branch to the commission. They agreed to boost monitoring efforts and established an interagency task force. This group includes the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service the National Marine Fisheries Service, and the Federal Aviation Administration, all working together to address environmental concerns as launch frequency ramps up. Of course, in this first round, 301. U.S. District Judge Stanley Blumenfeld Jr., in March, said he would dismiss, opens new tab the case, because SpaceX had not shown it was harmed by CCC's vote. He has a point, without concrete injury, Courts typically find that a lawsuit is not ripe for judicial review and may dismiss it for lack of standing. Blumenfeld also found that SpaceX did not allege that the commission vote caused SpaceX or Musk to refrain from any protected speech under the U.S. Constitution's First Amendment. The judge then allowed SpaceX to amend its complaint to provide more specific evidence of harm or clarify its legal standing. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, SpaceX responded by filing an amended lawsuit with additional allegations and details, which the judge later allowed to proceed, finding that the new filing sufficiently addressed the court's concerns, at least enough to survive initial dismissal and move forward in court. There are some caveats, however. First, the risk of dismissal remains. If during further proceedings, the court finds that SpaceX still cannot demonstrate actual injury or that the case is not ripe, the lawsuit could indeed be tossed out. Next, the judge's recent decision to let the amended suit proceed does not guarantee SpaceX will ultimately win. It only means the court found enough in the revised complaint to justify further review and fact-finding. For short, SpaceX's lawsuit could still be dismissed if the court ultimately agrees that there is no actual injury or ripe controversy. The case is proceeding for now, but the Commission's argument remains a significant hurdle for SpaceX to overcome. Anyway, if you loved this deep dive, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and ring the bell. We're aiming for 150,000 subscribers, and we need you to get there. Check out our other videos on Starship, Artemis, and more, and let's keep exploring the cosmos together. 
So far, SpaceX has solidified its role as one of the most vital contractors at Vandenberg Space Force Base, and really across the entire spectrum of military space operations. When SpaceX hits a delay, it can bring national security missions to a halt. What makes SpaceX indispensable here is a number of major military contracts, for example, deals to launch satellites for the Space Development Agency. Looking ahead, the Space Force plans to buy even more Falcon Heavy launches. In the eyes of both the military and the intelligence community, the Falcon Heavy, alongside ULA's Vulcan, is stepping in to replace the now-retired Delta IV Heavy rocket, which had been launching classified surveillance missions into high Earth orbits for over 20 years. For years now, the Falcon Heavy has been a go-to option for defense missions. It's one of the most powerful operational rockets on Earth, with the ability to lift hefty payloads into a wide range of orbits. That's critical for military operations that need to deploy multiple satellites or large craft all at once. A great example, the USS F-67 mission, where SpaceX launched a military communications satellite along with five smaller payloads in a single go. And let's talk cost. The Falcon Heavy comes with a base launch price of about $90 million, far less than what United Launch Alliance typically charges. ULA's Atlas V starts at $109 million, while the Delta IV Heavy has cost north of $350 million per launch, making it viable mainly for government customers. Even the newer Vulcan Centaur, designed to be more affordable, still carries a price tag somewhere between $100 million and $200 million. This affordability comes down to one key factor, reusability. SpaceX's first stage boosters return to Earth and are refurbished for future missions. That's not just cost saving. It also increases how frequently launches can happen, giving the military rapid response capabilities when time matters most. Then there's the technology. Falcon Heavy isn't just powerful, it's smart. It supports a wide array of defense-focused missions, including experimental flights like those involving the X-37B space plane. These missions test cutting-edge technologies that feed directly into the nation's defense strategy. SpaceX's contributions extend beyond launch vehicles. In the satellite realm, the company has made a major impact through Starlink. Notably, SpaceX provided and funded Starlink service for Ukraine largely on its own, proving that the network can operate in an active war zone, and showing a level of resilience the U.S. military didn't expect from a commercial system. That said, Elon Musk has made it clear. Starlink is meant to be a civilian network, not a tool of war. That's where Starshield comes in. It's the military version of Starlink, designed with defense applications in mind. And if you think that's bold, consider this. The Department of Defense is exploring a scenario where it wouldn't just hire SpaceX. It would own and operate the company's massive Starship rocket directly. The idea is to use Starship for high-risk, sensitive missions as a government-operated asset. If that happens, we're looking at a future where military capabilities leap forward in a massive way, thanks to a rocket that's still in the making. Of course, bringing Starship to life takes serious funding. That's why SpaceX's ongoing contracts for Falcon Heavy launches and Starlink operations are so crucial. They're helping bankroll the future. It's no secret that some political forces, especially in California, aren't thrilled with Elon Musk's influence. But the Pentagon can't afford to let politics derail its strategic goals. Whatever it does next, it'll have to be more calculated than ever.